Hey folks, in this video, we're gonna talk about how to get started with the actual exam process in 2023. So if you're new to the whole profession or if you're studying for exam P or FM, then this video is meant for you. I'm also really excited to share a brand new actuarial exam prep platform in this video. The platform is called the Actuarial Nexus, and it's a project I've been working on day in and day out for the past year. Because we're talking about exams and half of this video is going to be a demo of the Actuarial Nexus, I thought it could be fun to put in quizzes throughout the video. So if you're able to answer all the quiz questions, you'll be eligible for a 50% discount off of all products on the platform. To get things started, why do actuarial exams even matter? Exams are gonna be a critical part of your entire career. They're also especially important starting off because they play a critical role in getting your foot in the door. According to this recent LinkedIn poll, many employers won't even consider you if you don't have a minimum number of exams passed. So how do you get started with exams? First, you need to decide which exam you're going to take. The overwhelming majority of candidates start with either exam P or exam FM. I'll leave a link below recommending which exam you should take first. When comparing P and FM, you can see that the pass rate and the pass mark for the two exams are nearly identical. The pass rate is the percentage of candidates who pass the exam, and the pass mark is the minimum percentage of questions you need correct to pass the exam. So effectively, you need to answer at least 21 questions correctly to pass. It gets a bit more nuanced than that. I'll leave a link below that goes over the calculation in detail if you're interested. So when studying, personally, I would aim for a higher than 70% to give yourself some buffer, but that's really up to you depending on your risk tolerance and how much time you have to study. All right, hopefully you've been paying attention because here's clue number one. The letter of the correct choice will be the first letter of the promo code. Once you decide on the exam to take, the next step is to find study materials. The SOA website has a list of the major platforms that provide support for the exams. The SOA also releases free practice questions for exams P and FM. If you're looking for online communities, the Actuarial subreddit as well as the Actuarial Exam Study Group Discord server are active and offer great resources. I'll leave a link to each of these resources below. The next step is to register for the exam. Registration is done directly on the Society of Actuaries website. I'll leave a link below. Now that you've decided to take an exam, how do you get started studying? The common rule of thumb is to study 100 hours for each exam hour. For exams P and FM, this rule is probably overkill, especially if you know how to study. So in the next section, we're gonna create a detailed study plan so you can study more efficiently. To create a study plan, first we break down the process into three major steps. First is learning the concepts, second is doing practice questions, and third is taking mock exams. Learning the concepts and solving practice questions go hand in hand. Personally, I would spend most of the time on practice questions because when you're solving practice questions, you're engaging in active learning. And this is gonna help you internalize the material faster than watching videos or reading text. Earlier, we mentioned that on average, you need to answer at least 71% of the questions correctly to pass. Generally, the more data you have on your study habits, the better you can monitor your progress. If you have a way to measure your accuracy rate as you study, that gives you a decent proxy to see where you stand relative to the pass mark. Later in this video, we'll talk about how the actual Nexus tracks various analytics for you, so you don't have to keep track of this manually. As an example, when comparing the profiles of these two users on the platform, it should be apparent which user has a higher chance to pass. Earlier, we also saw that the pass rate on exam P and FM was around 50%, and this is consistent sitting to sitting. So another way to gauge your chance to pass using the pass rate instead of the pass mark is to consistently be in the top X percent of candidates. Now, this method is much harder to track individually because you don't really know how other people are studying. And so this was one of the inspirations in creating social elements on the actuarial nexus. Each user has a profile, which includes analytics on their question attempts and their progress over time. And this allows you to see where you stand relative to other users. There's also a leaderboard to see where you stand relative to the top performers. One methodical approach to increase your accuracy rate is to identify weak subjects and continue to work on those subjects until there are no longer weaknesses. It's really difficult to put a number on these things because everyone is gonna learn at different rates. However, if you're the type of person that likes specificity, I would recommend at least 500 questions during the practice questions phase. 500 questions might sound like a lot, but it's actually not that bad when you compare it to the 100 hour rule. On average, it takes less than four minutes to solve each question. And assuming that it takes about five minutes to review on average, that comes out to nine minutes per question or about 75 hours for 500 questions. On the actual nexus, all your analytics are automatically tracked for each question attempt. And this can save a lot of time because you can go back and focus on the questions you got incorrect or the areas that you're weak in. 
So going back to the study plan, after you're comfortable with practice questions, it's time to move on to mock exams. Mock exams help you build endurance and familiarity with the exam setting. On a 30 question mock exam, I would aim for at least 24, correct? So that gives you some buffer in case something unexpected happens. Assuming you take 10 mock exams, that's effectively 300 more practice questions. So by the end of your study cycle, you should have completed around 800 questions from practice questions and mock exams. And if you're getting consistently at least 24 out of 30 correct on mock exams, I would say you have a really good chance of passing the actual exam. All right, hopefully you're still paying attention because here are clues two and three. For clue two, you should end up with a number. Hint, it should be two digits. Before we start demoing the features on the actual Nexus, I want to talk about the state of the platform currently and where it's headed in the future. As of July 2023, the actual Nexus is listed as a study resource for exam PNFM on the official SOA website. In terms of future plans, this is just the first year of launch, so there's still plenty of room for growth. So in some future videos, I'll be talking specifically about topics in exam P and FM and showing you how you can use the actual Nexus to study efficiently. Earlier, I talked about the SOA sample questions. These are a set of questions and solutions released by the SOA, and they're widely regarded as being representative of the types of questions and difficulty of questions on the actual exam. This is the foundation of the question base on the actual Nexus. From here, we use generative AI to expand on this question base, as well as write our own unique solutions. So for exam P, there are over 600 unique solutions and over 300 unique questions that have been written using AI, all of which have been validated by beta testers, early adopters, and by myself over the course of the past year. Using this method, you're guaranteed to get a set of questions that is in line with the questions on the actual exam. In addition to questions, we also offer a written course. The course is over 45 chapters and integrates with the rest of the platform. The actual Nexus is a practice questions first platform. So by design, the course is going to teach you the basic concept and the nuance is in the practice question solutions. Within each solution, you'll have a direct link to the relevant chapters so that if you need a reference to the definition or basic understanding, you can directly link to it. So quickly on pricing, I think the actual Nexus offers a very generous free tier. You have unlimited access to 60 questions if you're choosing. You have access to all the features, so you can take mock exams, you can track your analytics, you can increase your level, all of that for free, up to 60 questions. Throughout the first year of launch, there's discounted pricing, and as we talked about earlier in this video, there's additional promotion codes on top of that. So far, the pricing and questions have been focused on exam P. For exam FM, over 400 questions and solutions have been imported onto the platform and you can go through them for free throughout the end of the year. I still need to go through and generate unique questions and unique solutions. So up until the end of 2023, everything is going to be completely free for exam FM. All right, the last and final clue. Which of the following is not true? Once you assemble the promo code, you can visit theactualnexus.com, scroll down to the pricing section, select your duration, and hit purchase. Once the payment page loads, you can enter in your promo code. If it doesn't work, that means they've all been claimed or it might not be the right promo code. The Astro Nexus uses a tags-based system. Every question has at least two tags. From here, problem sets can be created from tags. There are three ways to create problem sets. The first method is through the linked syllabus, which is designed for students who prefer a guided approach to learning. The syllabus is organized by tag and follows the objectives outlined in the SOA syllabus verbatim. Each tag contains a list of interactive practice problems that the user can then selectively add to their problem set. For new users, I would recommend going with the linked syllabus. The second method is called Quick Start, which gives the user a hands-off approach to creating problem sets. Quickstore will randomly sample new problem sets from user preset configurations. So configurations could target specific difficulty ranges, specific topics, or only new questions. The third and final way to create problem sets is through the search feature. Search is highly customizable and allows you to create problem sets based on keywords found in the question, solution, or question title. It also includes other advanced features. I would recommend using this approach if you have specific questions you want to target. Otherwise, the first two methods should suffice. After creating a problem set, we're taking to the question panel. Starting off in the top left of the screen is your user level. Your user level goes up or down depending on whether you get the practice question correct or incorrect. The algorithm is based off a binary variation of an ELO rating system. I've been told that C is the most common answer, so let's go with C. Okay, C is not the correct answer, and because of that, you can see that our level decreased. So from here, we can go to the solution panel. 
And like we talked about earlier, there are direct links to the relevant course chapters. You can see that this specific question has a 91% first attempt accuracy rate. So that means 10 out of 11 users who have not attempted this question before got it correct. Because this question is relatively simple, AI doesn't struggle too much with it. For some of the more complex solutions on the platform, we use generative AI to explain the process of the solution and then call on computational engines to perform the math calculations. This is similar to what ChatGPT does with plugins, except we do it programmatically on the platform. In the middle section, we can select from four different panels. There's the question panel, the solution panel, the discussion panel, and an AI tutor. Let's take a look at the discussion panel now. In addition to being able to post questions or respond to other users, you can also ask the AI to respond to your comment. The Ask AI feature is experimental, and you should not expect AI to be factually correct 100% of the time. The current implementation is a solutions interpreter, not a solutions engine. Approaching it from this perspective makes the AI a lot more reliable, especially when the solutions were generated by AI and validated by humans. Currently, you can select between GPT 3.5 and GPT 4. GPT 4 is way more powerful, but also way more expensive to use. The platform uses a token space system, so when you use AI, it will consume your tokens. Personally, I would use GPT 4 for more complicated questions and GPT 3.5 if you have a simple question. The final tab is called AI Tutor. It works similar to the Ask AI feature in the discussion panel. The difference is that in the discussion panel, any generated responses are available for everyone to see. To get the most out of this feature, be sure to hit the chat plus button because otherwise the AI will start with a blank slate. I would also recommend crafting a careful question in your initial prompt. Currently, AI doesn't really have memory. So every time you send a new message, the entire chat history has to be passed to the API. And you're basically charged on the number of characters that you pass along. So the longer the conversation goes, the more unnecessarily expensive it gets. Currently, you start with a thousand tokens on the platform. If you need more, you can always email admin at theactualnexus.com. This feature is still highly experimental, and as with any live AI service, it's important to approach the responses with a healthy dose of skepticism. AI is nowhere near perfect right now. However, the advantages of AI are quite compelling. AI is available 24-7, responds immediately, and explains concepts very well. As a bonus for making it until the very end, here's a promo code for 60% off. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.